Well, a town in California got hit with a tornado, and this is a town which is not normally prepared for it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk to you about why it's uniquely bad, uh, given the fact that uh, this town does not normally deal with that. Here is ABC News 7 uh, discussing it. The roof flew off! The roof is flying off! Sheesh! Oh my god! A vortex of danger sending debris flying into the air. Entire roofs ripped off, ripped off buildings. Dozens of vehicles smashed. This isn't the Midwest, it's Montebello. Workers inside warehouses suddenly forced to seek cover when this confirmed twister hits without warning. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Suter live now in Montebello with new video just in. Leanne. Mark, it was shock and awe for all of those who witnessed that tornado. Take a live look behind me here, and you can see the damage left behind. That's a truck's bed liner now lodged in the tree. The roof is flying off. A swirling storm of <laughs> dangerous debris. Oh, my God. Holy <laughs> this tornado. As a damaging EF1 tornado suddenly tears through Montebello. The wind all of a sudden starts going fast, fast, and you start seeing the roof going all over. You gotta wonder if shock, if shock and awe is back in the uh, in the palette of news people, given the recent anniversary we just had of the uh, the uh, Iraq War. One witness capturing the wicked winds as they rip through this business, ripping off Good part Lord. of the roof. This is crazy. I mean, we're used to earthquakes, but not not tornadoes. Sudden storm with peak winds of 110 miles per hour hitting fast and furious. There was a lot of noise. I thought my cars, everything's damaged. Gusts of wind, very deep, like you never heard before. And then just one of the roads. Not trying to get on uh, Ross Garcia here. He seems like a fine guy. I have noticed Trumpisms slipping into the vernacular of, uh, of Americans. I, I hate it so much. I that is one of the many, many reasons. I file that under the petty ones that don't really matter. Uh that I can't wait for Trump to be uh gone skis. Like you've never seen before. How do you know what I've seen? You don't know what I've seen. That's something Trump says, and it's really, really annoying <laughs> just to hear it creep in in uh, non Trump related things. Oh well. The door just popped open. And then things were like debris was flying inside the warehouse. Tornado touching down just before 11:30. In an instant, dozens of businesses in the industrial area ripped apart. It got real loud, you know, like I'd never heard it. And for about 30 seconds to a minute, um, and then we kind of all were in the office. And then after it died down, we went outside, and there was debris everywhere. It was like a dust bowl in the in the factory. Um, and we looked up and we saw that most of our skylights had popped out a big 10 by 20 hole in the roof in the front. And then when we got to the back of the building, basically the whole back 5,000 square feet of roof was gone. 17 buildings in a one block area were damaged. 11 of them now red tagged. Half of the building roof was ripped out and people came out in confusion and then pipes were busted and mm. it, was, it was a mess. Numerous vehicles severely damaged by the flying debris. One person suffering a minor injury. Thankfully, no one seriously hurt. Everyone counting their blessings. I cannot even explain what happened because uh, if you see tornadoes on TV or in movies, but you never think that it can happen to you, right? So that guy says he's never experienced a tornado before. That was a that was an E1 tornado. Michigan recently had an E5 just last year. It was a brief one. I think it was only an E5 for like or maybe it was E4. Uh and it was only that for like 90 seconds. During that 90 seconds it swept through a town and just about flattened it. This tornado was unusual as well. Though it was only an E1, did a tremendous amount of damage. And that guy says he's never seen a tornado before. Thinks it could, could never happen to him. 
That's because he's in a place that doesn't normally get tornadoes like that. One of the issues that is going to be a bigger and bigger issue is that these businesses, these buildings, don't have insurance for this kind of thing. Because in the entire history, up until now, they ha- uh, of, of their existence, up until now, they haven't needed it. So why would, I mean, why would you have, for example, uh, flood insurance if you live in Denver? It's a mile-high city. You're assuming you're not going to get flooded. Why would you have tornado insurance if you live in that town? Also, the buildings are not constructed with those kind of weather events in mind. There are different specifications you have for in an area that gets earthquakes versus an area that gets earthquakes and tornadoes versus an area that only gets tornadoes but no earthquakes. So if the if the literal climate starts changing and you start getting weather events that did not used to happen suddenly happening in a town, that town is going to be hurt way worse financially and also in terms of the destruction because it wasn't built to handle them. Also, in a... In a look, I gotta keep harping on this. In a society that is uh, where everything is decided on how much money you have, all expenses will be spared where possible. You're not going to be building tornado-proof homes and businesses in an area that's not anticipating to get tornadoes. So it is, it's very harmful. And, and this community will have a harder time recovering because they are not going to get the insurance payouts than a community that does expect tornadoes, will get. I would hope that there's, uh, there are going to be some federal dollars coming their way. Certainly, though, thankfully, uh, California is Democrat-controlled, and it's also, I think, the 13th uh, largest economy in the world on its own. So, presumably, they'll take care of their citizens. But, doesn't change the fact people are going to suffer. Climate change is real, folks. This is what it looks like. Yeah, certainly not what anyone expected today. The National Weather Service says that storm had the perfect conditions for creating that tornado, and mm. they say it happened in a matter of minutes. Live in Montebello, Leanne Suter, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, a few minutes people will not forget. In Montebello, Leanne, thank you. Chris Christie has been over the scene of the devastation much of the day. He's live in Air 7 HD with the latest on the power outages. Oh, that's and the big job name. SoCal Edison crews have ahead of them. Chris. That's right, Mark, that EF-1 tornado packing an estimated peak wind of 110 miles per hour and taking out the power lines along with it, in addition to those 17 warehouses in this commercial district that have been affected by that tornado, dozens of others, in fact, 87 customers in this area are without power as a result of that twister. And just in the last hour, SoCal Edison has arrived with several Big crews here as they begin the work of restoring power in this neighborhood. Reporting from Air 7 HD, I'm Chris Christie, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Chris, thank you. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC 7 content by clicking the subscribe. Well, gosh. Let's, uh, let's talk about, let's say, you know what, let's look at this in a little more detail. One second. So this is a this is a story by the Washington Post. Yeah, let's have a quick gander here. Oh good god. Hazardous weather of practically every form has walloped California this week. On Wednesday, on Wednesday, the same storm system that blasted the San Francisco and Monterey Bay areas with damaging winds Tuesday 
spun up a tornado in Montebello, California, just eight miles east of downtown Los Angeles. Videos of the Twister, which hit at about uh, 11.20 a.m. Pacific time, received a cone-shaped funnel, revealed a cone-shaped funnel lofting large amounts of debris into the sky and shredding parts of roofs, as we saw in the previous video. Local television affiliate KABC reported that the Twister not only tore up the roofs of multiple industrial buildings, but also damaged cars and injured at least one person. It felt like a bomb or something exploded. But then you see everything flying around, all the debris. It just felt weird. You're not used to it. An eyewitness named Miguel told local affiliate Fox 11. Montebello is 20 miles from the waters of the chilly Pacific Ocean, where rainfall tends to come with relatively cool air that is not normally conductive to thunderstorms. In this case, the hurricane-like storm that slammed the San Francisco Bay Area on Tuesday drifted south to near Monterey Bay instead of, being, instead of heading inland. It drew moist air over Southern California that helped feed the pop-up thunderstorms in the region Wednesday. All the while, there was enough sunshine early in the day around Los Angeles to heat the ground while cold air entered the area at high altitudes. The resulting temperature contrast between the ground and high elevations created enough atmospheric instability to build the storm that spawned the Montebello tornado. The tornado that hit Montebello was the second to hit Southern California in two days. On Tuesday, video showed that the weak twister spun up in, oh good God, in Carpentaria, oh there we go, in Carpentaria, a small seaside city in, the, in Santa Barbara County. That tornado damaged more than two dozen mobile homes. The National Weather Service office in Los Angeles said in a bulletin that it dispatched crews to survey the damage in both Montebello and Carpentaria to determine whether tornadoes touched down and assign damage ratings. On Wednesday afternoon, the Weather Service issued a bulletin stating that the uh, Carpentaria torne tornado was rated an EF0 on the 0 to 5 scale for intensity and produced winds up to 75 miles an hour. Uh, in a tweet Wednesday evening, the Weather Service confirmed that the tornado occurred in Montebello but said it had not yet assigned a rating. We later found out it was E1. While California isn't Kansas, tornadoes occur across the state almost every year. They're most common in the winter and spring, when powerful storms like this week's come ashore. Statewide, about seven tornadoes strike each year. As recently as 2019, there were 14. March is the most common month for California tornadoes, with 18% of annual activity followed by February 14 followed by February with 14% and January and April with 12% each since 1950 just 45 tornadoes have touched down in Los Angeles County okay so what is different about this tornado one it's uh, okay <laughs> one it is uh, stronger it is a stronger weather event than is normal Two, it's hitting in an unusual place. We have a growing problem with this. It's going, to, it's going to keep up like it has been, with tornadoes creeping into areas that they don't normally go. Uh, weather events of all sorts growing in inten intensity. Uh, and generally speaking just becoming a larger and larger and larger expense for Americans. Uh, there are things we can do, fortunately. Uh, obviously, number one, just vote as left as you can in primaries. There is right now only one party which takes global warming seriously. In fact, Republicans actively fight against any measures to help the environment. Even Richard Nixon would be ashamed. Number two, you can reduce the uh, you can reduce the power big oil has to bribe admit, uh, our our uh, officials and to generally carry around uh, carry out their evil plans. Uh, in the description, there is a link for tax credits that you can get. 
if you should decide to purchase an electric or hybrid vehicle. You purchasing one different kind of vehicle is not going to single-handedly gut big oil. But what you will do is give a little bit less money to them every time you drive. You will help popularize electric vehicles. Your coworkers, your friends, your family will say, what do you think of that electric vehicle? Is it convenient? Is it, is it, uh, is it truly cheaper to run? And you will find the answer to all those is yes, particularly, particularly if you go with a hybrid where you have gasoline power if you need it, you want to take a road trip, okay. By the way, some of those cars even charge as they drive on gasoline. Baby steps. But they are necessary baby steps. In addition, if you have the money for it, you can install solar panels on your home. That way you are not... Uh, paying coal companies for your power when you can, when the sun's bright. Give it a thought. I don't even suggest that this tornado couldn't possibly have happened without global warming. No, no, it, it could have. But it was in an unusual spot at a, at a somewhat unusual time, and it was certainly of an unusual intensity. These These storms are going to keep becoming a bigger and bigger problem. All we have to do as a responsible populace is our part individually not to contribute to the harm. So if you have an opportunity, if you have the means to buy an electric car or install solar panels or even just take a reusable bag to the grocery store, if you have the means to do that, you should do that. 